What is up guys? Okay, today I'm taking on a project that I have never done before and a lot of people get intimidated and they spend thousands of dollars for a repair, repair place to do stuff that, you know, that they can do themselves. Uh, me, I am no mechanic. I've done, you know, a little tinkering with mechanics my whole life, but nothing <laughs> as far as this. So today, thanks to TRQ, with a great price and uh, hopefully a great product, we're going to be changing our wheel bearing hub assemblies. Um, I changed my rotors and my brakes last time and we noticed that there was a grinding sound. It was very faint, it was almost like a sound, almost sound like you had your window slightly cracked, but it was coming from the front end of the car. And at that time I didn't know what it was. So put the brakes on the rotors, swapped that out, and a year later this noise has gotten way louder and you know it really <laughs> sounds like we're dragging something under the front of our car and it actually has a little chirp every now and again chirp, chirp, chirp. with this job this is actually a front end only we're not going to do both um we don't have a problem with our rears um so i i'm not going to replace him but I, even though I did change my brakes out not too long ago, I'm still going to replace my brakes because the amount of work that goes into taking all this stuff off, why wouldn't you? Brakes are fairly cheap these days. Um, so make sure you have all the correct tools. Um, the list that is provided by the manufacturer is, of course, the new bearings, which we have an 8 uh, through 19 millimeter socket, one one inch and a quarter socket, which is for the core bolt, which you'll see later. Um, ratchet extensions, we have those. Breaker bars, which we have those. You can use a, a, a straight pipe or some kind of extension that you can hook to your ratchet to break free. Um, you can also use brake cleaner and uh, some kind of brake release, bolt release spray if you have it. Um, but you don't have to have that. So they recommend a flat blade screwdriver which we have several sizes especially the large one I recommend having. Um, a bungee cord, small pry bar, um, needle nose pliers, a hammer, a good little mini sledgehammer works great when you're working on vehicles because it's tough to get some of these things free. Um, just from past experience, a wire brush, um, brake part cleaner, brake grease, rags, paper towels, high temperature anti-seize lube basically prevents things from seizing together so the next time you take it apart you're not killing yourself or ripping your uh, parts apart because I've done that before from lack of experience by having to break bolts off and drill them out and then having to replace that whole part because I, I made a mistake. So high temperature anti-seize, we have that Torque wrench. I do not have a torque wrench. I'm going to see if they have one at the auto store. Um, if they do not, you have to use your better judgment. Anything that holds the actual tire on, you want to make sure that it has anywhere from 150 to 200 pounds. So basically, when you get it tight to where it tights with very, very little force, I, I, I think it's safe to say to go at least a half to three quarter turn to where when it gets hard you want to at least go a quarter turn once it gets tough but don't go too much because then you stand the chance of stripping out your bolts and or breaking them and jack and jack stands we've already been we already have those uh, new pads and rotors which we're going to go buy those right now brake pads compression tool that we do not have. Hopefully they have one. If not, I know how to push a compression pad in using other techniques with uh, C-clamps and stuff like that. Okay, when jacking your vehicle up, you want to make sure that you have a good space underneath your tire so where when you start pulling it off, you can maneuver things. And I have installed and started these jack stands that lock into place on both sides. Of course, I have my e-brake on and I have supports under my back rear tires to make sure this thing isn't gonna go anywhere. So, jack stands are great. I think you can, 
You can even rent them from AutoZone along with jacks and stuff like that. All right, so an important key factor when you're working on any vehicle is to find out exactly what tools you need to start the job, especially if you don't have other means to make it, you know, to an auto store to pick anything up. So what I've done was I made a list of every tool that I need, you know, watching videos and from the manufacturers and found all the tools that I needed and I have them laid out neatly on a table over there. And as you take parts off, you want to try and take them off and put them in an order somewhere neatly where they're not disturbed so that you can see. I like to lay them out in the order that they come off. That way when I go to put them back on, I know. And you know, sometimes I even take a picture of it pre and post to show that this is what it was before, this is what it was after. So that helps out a lot, you know, just take them with your phone, scroll back through them when you go back just to make sure that you don't miss any parts, step one, two, three. So anyways, moving on. Okay, so I'm not going to cheat y'all, so I'm going to explain this to you. I've already, before you lift the car up in the air, you want to break free all of your lugs. So as you can see, they're all loose because if you don't, it, you know the tires, oh, I have a wedge under here, but if you don't, I get it. Out. So if you don't, the tire will spin when you're trying to take it off. It's a big headache. So go ahead, pop off your tire. I do them both at the same time. Some people by themselves, uh, especially mechanics because they got a shop with a bunch of power tools. I don't have all that, so we're going to fast forward to the tire being off. Pull this tire off after we got all the lugs. Ah! And of course, it's always good to wear some black tough gloves. This is a really messy job. Okay, for the tires, when I take the tires off, I like to lay them flat. I personally like to take the tire and slide it underneath the front end of the car to where the axle comes down. Just in case for some reason something malfunctions and my jack stand falls or the frame collapses, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So it's always good to have four, four different acts of safety. You know, whatever, the more you can have, the better. Just make sure that it's not in your waist where you're working safely. Okay, so it's behind the axle, um, under the front end of the car, and I'm going to take the other one off and put it in the other side. That way, for some reason, this car comes down, it's got two rims to sit on. So, it, it takes away a lot of the chance of, you know, in serious injury. The next step is you're going to take off your, your brake hub, your brake cover, whatever this thing is called. Um, and there's two bolts, one at the top and the bottom. And I'm using a 11 16th, I'm not sure exactly what it is in millimeters, but I'm sure you can find the conversion online. So we're going to break these free. Obviously, it's really tough to get these loose, so they require a pry bar. I don't personally have one, so what I normally do is I take my socket, hook it up. I've already broke these free, but I'll use a wrench that I have, and I use it and basically make an extension so basically with the leverage it, it comes off pretty easy I mean it was a little torque but I got it off fairly easy so if you ever don't have a pry bar you can work your tools in your advantage now that we got our bolts out I like to take my bolts out and set them aside in the tray organized so we don't lose them we're gonna go ahead and pull this off and one thing that they do in one of the tutorials I watch is if they take a bungee or something and they strap the caliber up onto the the shock, the spring of the vehicle. Uh, they went through the hole, that's right. So we're going to put it through the hole, go through the other hole, keep it up a little higher. That way we don't put any tension on our hose here because this thing, depending on how old it is, can crack. And you don't want that to happen because that's another job. And it would suck to find out that it, your hose was leaking after you put everything back together because you got to put it back on. So, all right, moving on. 
Alright, so we have the caliber off. Um, I was planning on changing my brakes. I actually bought new ceramic brakes for heavy duty because my wife drives this thing, you know. <laughs> she got that battle to the floor. But anyways, as I was taking them off, I just changed them a year ago. And I noticed that the tread is pretty good on them. Um, so, I don't think we're going to be swapping out our brakes at least for another year. Because these have lasted a year and they're not even a quarter of the way gone. So, we're not going to replace those. But you get to see the inner workings of it. Um, also, I noticed that my divider spring is missing. So, basically, there's a spring that goes up here that... Basically, when you're not using your brakes, it separates your calibers from hitting the rotor. So, I'm going to have to go to the store and get me another spring. So, once we have the actual brakes off, um, there are two bolts on the inside of this mounting bracket. And I am using a three-quarter inch, which can... I'll put a list of metrics on below the video so you can see you know the conversions and stuff like that so we're going to break these free I'm going to do it using my wrench technique that I was talking about and I like to grab it right here at the the pivot Let's try it with my right my strong hand all right so it came loose bam you want to kind of hold it level and try again try and do this so you can see it Man, yeah, see, if you tried to do that without this tool or without a pry bar, it would have been very difficult. So, we're going to go ahead and take this off. Re rewind. If you're lucky enough to have power tools, this goes a lot quicker. Um, and also, <laughs> In between cutscenes, I'm actually doing the other side too at the same time. Alright, do, 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 do. Remember to keep your bolts. Put them in the same order as you take them off. On, or in a box. I'm using a box over here. Alright, and this thing just pops right off. There you go. Make sure your boots are good. Okay, for this next part, we're going to take the rotor off. Huh. Uh, it's been a while since I've done these. These are fairly new. I'm not going to get them resurfaced because I just put them on last year. Um, we'll probably go through our first set of brakes and then we'll get them resurfaced. So what I do, they have this star uh, bolt right here. And it's very difficult to get out if they don't put C's uh, lube on it. Um, so... You want this star tip, which is a T35. And what I do, instead of using like a screwdriver, because it's really tough to get out, I'll put it on a quarter inch ratchet. Alright, so it wants to be a little more difficult. So I have a pry bar that I'm going to use on my wrench. I'm going to put it in there. There we go. See if this works. So basically taking all the effort out so we're not trying to kill ourselves. Okay, I like to take a I like to use a crowbar and put it in here like so. Does this fit on there? Y'all, y'all. Because when we go to spin it, the whole thing's gonna want to turn. So we have our crowbar. Let's see if this thing's not gonna work. <laughs> This is tricky right here, but that screw is very tough to get out. And, ah, okay, so we broke our, uh, our temperature well that it puts on itself. Then we break out the actual screwdriver to get it the remainder of the way. I don't think this is the right screwdriver. Talk about not having the right tools. Ah, Alright, that's working. It's very difficult, and I did put anti seize stuff on it, but obviously it's not wanting to work. That's actually a pretty cool trick there, guys. 
is I have made a contraption that does all the hard work for me using a pry bar, a screwdriver, and some channel locks. There's some vice grips. So now, ah, wow, that's over with. Ah, we can take it off. This little guy put up that much of a fight. Whew! Huh. Yeah, can't see it. On the back side, there is a sensor that you have to take off before you can go any further. And it's very important that you take this off and try not to break it because we all know sensors are overpriced for the amount of them they have inside the engine. Uh, let me see. It's recommended that you have a pair of needle nose pliers, which I'm not going to spend $10 on those. This is a 5 16 and it has a little bolt back here that you have to take off. We're going to use our little homemade tool. If you want to go out and buy stuff, that's on you. Um, we're going in the wrong direction. So, yeah, see that came off fairly easy. Go ahead and pull it off the rest of the way. Alright! There we go. Ah, come on. Come on, come on. You want to act like you're coming in off, but then you want to hang up. Alright, this is what it looks like. Pretty, see if you can hold it down here to the light. I need to get better lighting. But, boom. This is what it looks like. Just a little bolt. Make sure you put it somewhere. You can find it fairly easy. The sensor, they use the needle nose pliers to pull it out. But mine came out fairly easy. I don't know if you can see this thing. It's hooked to a little black cable here. Uh, not too much to it. Never had to replace one of these. I don't want to do it today. So we're going to tuck it up here neatly. Making sure that it's not getting damaged out of the way. So now you're safe to take off your actual ball bearing system here. Huh. And this is where your inch and a quarter this is where your inch and a quarter socket comes into play. Uh, <laughs> I can already tell you this is going to be kind of difficult. Um, so in this sense you're going to need pry bars, do -do -do, crowbars, and all of the above. I don't know why they didn't make some kind of locking system on this. Let's see what we can do. I like to MacGyver my own stuff. So we're going to go this way. Ah, okay. <coughs> what I've seen inside of here is the back side of these bolts could be used to our advantage if they'll go backwards. So I thought I was going to be able to get this uh, core bolt right here, which was the inch and a quarter off by using <laughs> basically a little easy torque method, but apparently this thing has probably 200 or plus uh, pounds of torque to it and considering that it's been on there for a long time it's probably close to 300 with the corrosion so basically I tried for about an hour and I couldn't get it off so then I sprayed it you know around in the center and on top with some brake cleaner and then I soaked it in some liquid wrench cable chain because I didn't have any PB uh, torque release spray but this right here seemed to work and I soaked the bolt in it real good and behind it and I let it sit for an hour while I went and ate dinner and uh, so now we were able to oh yeah and I had to go rent this because the regular wrench was not working so it has a little bit stronger neck and it's a half inch and it gives you the opportunity to put more leverage onto it and before this thing was felt like it was going to bend because it was so tight but after I sprayed these chemicals and let it soak for a little while I had to stand on the torque wrench but the pressure of bouncing a little bit broke it free so now we have this thing off and whoo let's see take it off you can see how hard it was, how tough it was on there. It kind of like 
chewed it up a little bit, but it's still usable, so we're not gonna have to replace that. Another thing that the video I watched recommended was to take a pry bar, which my pry bar isn't long enough, and wedge it in here to the ground so this thing doesn't spin while you're trying to take that bolt out. What I did, since I am replacing the entire unit here, I no longer need these bolts, and it's not gonna, if they bend, it's not that big of a deal. So I took my sledgehammer, and these things, they back out freely with a sledge, and you basically back them out and make sure that they fall in the little grooves back here, and once they hit back in there and you do it on both sides, it keeps this thing from moving. So then when you're turning it, you don't have to worry about this thing spinning on you. So that was very helpful. Um, and to be honest, it didn't bend any of them anyways, so if you were gonna reuse this, you're good to go doing it that way. Just to say, if you don't have the right tools, you improvise. But in this case, I used the lug bolts, pushed them back in to the housing, and they basically, from both sides, created a strong torque to where I could break this bolt free. Okay, I broke the camera free because I wanted to be able to show you guys. This right here is the sensor I was talking about. You can see the hole down there. That's the screw hole. This is where the sensor goes in. So that's what that looks like. If you say you know what to look for. And next step, there are some bolts back here. If you look, you can see them holding the caliber on. And they're the same size as the ones that hold the brakes on. Uh, so basically you're going to need some kind of extension and there are I believe three or four of those. We're going to go ahead and take those off. We have loosened all our bolts. Um, these bolts they don't come all the way out which I like because they don't get mixed up with the other ones. Um, but basically those are one, two, three, four. There's four bolts that is holding this uh, bearing unit on here. And you notice how I still have this bolt on here flush. Um, the reason for that is you're going to be able to use a sledgehammer to tap on that, which is going to free it from the solenoid that's back here. I don't know what it's called. I call it, call it whatever I want. <laughs> so anyways, from the boot attachment. <sighs> so if you tap it just a little bit, it comes right out. So then you got to worry about this, this guy in the front. This thing has been on here a while. It's going to be hard to get off. So you can tap it. Right in here, you're just gonna, you're gonna have to tap it off. Oh, see, it's breaking free. I'm not gonna make y'all sit here and endure the whole thing. Um, just remember, anything that you do, especially these bolts, leverage is your friend. So I had to use, find a good sturdy point and help with my wrench. Let's see, right here, ratchet wrench. At 11 16th and I put it on the bolt and I actually use a leverage point to help me break it free so you got to be careful with that because you will bust your knuckles but sometimes you need that torque to get this done so I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off and the other one and we'll be back to put the new ones on all right so it's coming off quite slow so this guard right here looks like we're gonna have to take this off um, a, it's the same one that's on the sensor, uh, 5 sixteenths, and there's one, two, three, four screws you got to take out here. Um, that one, we're going to have to get a wrench to get that one out because uh, it's behind, behind the, whew, because it's behind the wheel bearing. Woo! Okay, first one's down, so you tap around it, all around it, takes a lot of beating. A lot of noise, but guess what? We are get good to go. Boom! First one done. Don't worry about those. We don't even need those. We got new ones with our new parts. Wow. All right. So these things are done for. What you want to do next is this is where your wire brush is going to come into play, and. You're going to take your wire brush and you're going to clean around those edges. I'm going to pick this up. It's got some kind of grease on it. The video they show when they put the new ones on that I've seen, they don't put grease. 
I have some grease I'll put on there. But the main thing is, you want to get in here and you want to get all of this there's cor corrosion, tarnish, whatever you want to call this stuff. It's pretty thick. You want to get all of that out of there. Then when you're done, you're going to spray it with your brake cleaner. Clean it out. Alright, I've cleaned off most of the corrosion. And now I'm taking some, uh, some more of my brake cleaner. I put it on a rag. And I'm going to get in there. Wipe that out real good. Try to make sure we get a good, smooth connection when we put the other part in. On the connection point, I'm going to put some anti-seize lubricant. This way is basically like a high temperature silicone. Alright, ooh, it almost looks like no-ox for electricians. You're probably supposed to use gloves with this kind of stuff, but hey, get her done. Alright, so I jumped ahead a little bit, went ahead and put this plate back on because it's a lot easier to put on without this guy in the way. And I also put some grease, some basically lube inside on this and also inside the rim of this to make sure that you know it's got a smooth fit and it, honestly I think it'll prevent any kind of unnecessary noises when you got metal touching together so just remember your small holes small sp spacings go up top larger goes on the bottom God, I'm just joking from behind oh oh you're not on gotta make sure that you're lining up with your bolts. Voila! We're gonna tighten this joker back down onto here. Let's see. Uh, make sure we're getting in, in the right place. Definitely don't want to go tightening stuff. There it goes. All right. Just pop. Right there. Got a good solid seal against the metal. And we're gonna tighten our bolts back down. Of course there's four of them. We're gonna go from there guys. Now that we've got all of the bolts started here again, what you're gonna wanna do, and in this case I rented this because I wanna be exact because I've been bad about over torquing things. And this is a torque wrench that you can rent from, uh, what is this? Advanced Auto is where I got this one, so I take it back, I get all my money back, it doesn't cost me a dime, it's just they hold like 50 bucks. So, on this, these bolts, you want to torque these bolts to, I think it's 122 foot-pounds of pressure, which if you look right here, on the right side it says pounds, so you'll go to the 120 mark, or it says 125, so you go to the zero below the 125, which is 120, and then you go to the second mark, which is 122 and then of course you're going to torque this thing down let's see if we can get in there it's definitely a tight squeeze I'm right, going the wrong way okay Just gonna show one of one of these and how it torques. If you've never seen a torque wrench, it's kind of self-explanatory if you got it set up right. Alright, so you're gonna get it tight, then you're gonna torque it and you can feel it, it'll pop, which isn't very much for 120. So I'll probably go a little bit more. I want to go about 125. So, the goal is just to get it to the recommended torque, and me personally, I bump it a little more to make sure that it's good. Um, only on heavy hardware. When you got small hardware and, you, and then you're dealing with aluminum, you know, of course, you want to be 
ex, you know, exact when you go to torque because you can strip aluminum out. But when you're on steel and steel, you can torque a little bit more than recommended. It's not going to hurt it. But anyways, I'm going to get these things on here. Um, go ahead and work on the other side. And then we'll put this thing back together. First thing we're going to do to put this thing back together is we're going to connect our sensor because that was a component that was preventing us from pulling it out. Um, and we don't want to forget this thing. Uh, what I like to do with all of my screws, I normally soak them in a bucket while I'm working um, using my brake cleaner or something. I'll spray them all. In this case, we'll just do it on the rag. Kind of wipe it down, get any loose corrosion off. And I'm going to spray it with some high temperature. Uh, it's a high temperature lube. I'm using a chain lube um, for a chainsaw. But same concept. We're not going to leave a lot of residue on or oil on there. We're just going to get it a little bit loose. And you can also put no ox or uh, uh, high temperature lubricant if you got enough of it. I only got a little bit for this job. And we're going to plug our sensor back in. And it goes right back into the small hole that she came from. And then take your screw, get that back in there. These things aren't holding any major parts on, so the torque isn't really that important. Get it cinched down. Once you get it cinched down, it, the rim is plastic, so just kind of like quarter turn, and not even a quarter turn really. So now our sensor's back on there. We want to go ahead and put our rotor back on. And we're going to put it on backwards first so we can kind of spray this joker. I probably should have put something down here like some cardboard. But anyways, we're going to basically wipe the inside of this rotor off. Make sure there's no grease or anything on the actual rotor. You don't want that stuff to get in your brakes. And you also want a clean seal between your rotor and your, your bearing hub. Okay, putting this back together, you have your screw hole, um, your star tip 35T screw that goes right here. And you want to make sure you line it back up with that position. So, go ahead and slide it back on. Voila! Here is our screw. We're going to go ahead and spray some brake cleaner on it. I use brake cleaner for all of my cleaning when I'm doing these kind of jobs. And I'm going to spray it with some high temperature chain oil. Um, I recommend anything going on your tires to be high temperature because these things get extremely hot and the last thing you want is a fire. We're going to put, since this one's always very difficult to get out, we're going to put some anti-seize on this joker. Because, <laughs> wow, you'd be surprised these star tips, you'd think they'd make something a little more durable that, you know, maybe a square Allen or something, but these star tips, the edges are so soft when it comes to the amount of torque that it takes to get them off. And so, we're going to put this thing back on here. And I'm going to go ahead and get caught up on the other side. Alright, so we got this whole side caught up as well. <laughs> um, the hardest part about this job, you know, besides this little screw and the big, the big one in there. Yeah, we got to put those back in there. Was getting these two off. <laughs> The rest of them you can pretty much torque with a uh, 3H ratchet and get most of them off or uh, a ratchet wrench which you know I use for leverage sometimes or I actually use that to get stuff off. So of course we got our rotor back on, we got our screw in there, put some anti-seize on that before I put it in so next time hopefully it's not so hard to get off. This thing has lube on it, for, uh, grease, so hopefully it's a little easier to get off next time and we'll torque that down this screw has to be torqued down and of course we have the torque wrench 
to 200 pounds. I'm going to say that they're being sensitive on their torques, torques because <laughs> this stuff is not easy to get off. So we're going to torque our, our, our main bowl here to 200 pounds. And then uh, next step, we're going to go ahead and start putting our brakes back together. Okay, now that we're all nice and torqued here uh, on both sides, we're going to put our brakes back together. You're going to take these bolts and your brake mounting bracket, and it's going to go back on the back side like that. I'm going to leave it here. And this is very important because you change your brakes often. You want to put no seize lubricant on your brake bolts. Um, it's recommended to replace these things, but I don't ever replace them. I just clean them. My brake brake cleaner, pretty good. And then I coat them pretty good with this anti seize lubricant. So a little dab of it goes a long way. Uh, a lot of this stuff you don't want to get on your skins, that's why I'm wearing rubber gloves. Um, these gloves, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> are only rubber on one side. So, we're going to get as many grooves as we can. Set that one aside. Same thing here, just a little bit there. Oop. Run around your fingers. Run around we go. Okay, you're going to put these two bolts back on and you're going to torque those based on the specs and the notes below. So we got our mounting bracket back on. The next step, we're going to take this caliper off and be careful not to mess your hose up. If it's old, it could be fragile. But I just found a new tool this year and they sell it at AutoZone. But when you go to put these things back on, especially when you put on new brakes, your calibers aren't going to fit over the new brakes. So they made this nifty little tool right here that you can put... Whew, never used one of these before. Uh, does it go like that? Okay, that's what it is. I was going about it the wrong way. Let's turn this thing... Wah. So what you do is you take the inside caliper and you put it on the inside. This is made for a single caliper, but this basically has two. So what we can do is kind of work it back and forth until we get both calipers all the way in. And what happens is as you squeeze it, oh, we got it upside down, it pushes the caliper in and it pushes the brake fluid back up the line into the cylinder. Of course we're going to want to check that when we get done. But uh, you're going to basically crank this baby down. Come on. And I try to keep them somewhat even. I'm going to go to this side. I need to come out a little bit more. There we go. Crank this one down. Wow, that's so much easier than what I used to have to do. And these are the old brakes. I decided to keep the old brakes because they're really only a year old and they obviously haven't even burned through a quarter of their usage. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and keep these on here. So, we're going to leave this sitting up here. Make sure it doesn't fall. If you want to bungee it back up, you can. Now, High performance brake lubricant. So we're going to make sure that we lube up our little clips here because these clips are basically going to allow this brake pad to slide in and out. So when you're not using them, there's an X. Let's see if we can get them on there real quick. Boop, boop. All right, there we go. So. You want to lube these up really good. Um, some 
mechanics they use a brush um, they have the little jar of this stuff it's a little easier to apply uh, me <laughs> I'm just gonna use my finger make sure not to get any lube or grease or anything on your cylinder itself and oh, voila. I got a little bit there on my <laughs> my rotor I'm going to spray this with some brake cleaner here in a minute anyway so we make sure we can get all that stuff off but the main thing don't get it on your your brake pad itself boom boom there we go there's a lot of mechanics out there like laughing at me right now but hey I just saved a thousand dollars if not more doing this myself um, what we're gonna do also I recommend putting something down so your brake cleaner doesn't get on the floor but you want to spray your rotor off and if you got any lube on there go ahead and wipe it off any kind of grease we did get a little bit there oops my wife's gonna kill me. I'm gonna have to use some cat litter to get this up. Uh, I was trying to rush and get this thing done so I could have the rest of the weekend myself, but it ended up taking a little bit longer. But that's fine. It's a good learning experience. These kind of projects, you know, it's, it, it's a lesson, you know. So now we're gonna put our brakes back in here. Blah, blah. Notice how I don't have any grease on there, none on the rotors. Eh, I didn't get any on the back. I watched closely when I was putting those in. Alright, bam! And that's your brakes back on. Take your caliper, bring it down. Uh, you want to make sure you don't turn it the wrong direction because you put too much tension on that hose and it'll cause other problems. Wham! Almost done. So we're going to take our bolts. Clean them off real good. If there's any corrosion, you want to try and get all that corrosion out. You may have to take a wire brush to it. Luckily, these aren't in bad shape. Alright. Yaw, yeah, yaw. Yeah. Okay. Then we're going to put our anti-seize. On these, you only have to put the anti-seize on the threads. Don't get all on this, this extra section here. It's not necessary. You're just overdoing it then. Put that right there. Bam. It's not going to hurt it if it gets on there. Bam. And right there you go. You always want to make sure to get anti-seize on all the threads because the next time you take it off <laughs> if you have to take it off you're gonna be the one suffering which it'll come off but it's no bueno no fun for anybody bam one bolt two Woo. also make sure uh, prime example here make sure that your boots are lining up with your holes you don't want to tear those boots then you get dirt all in there and then you're really gonna have a problem so the boots are lined up this one's lined up it wasn't so I pointed that out learn from my own mistakes right but don't miss it because if you miss it it's going to cost you a lot more money down the road. So, torque wrench. I'm not going to go over the desired specs for the torque because I don't have it memorized. But, oh yeah. They say 120, or 150 I think for this. To be honest, I don't like the way this torque wrench feels. 
I'm used to torquing things myself and I'm pretty confident in the way I torque things. So, I'm going to torque it myself. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have to pick up a spring tomorrow, so I'm going to pull this thing back off tomorrow and put my spring there. There's supposed to be a spring that goes between each pad and basically when you're not using the pads, it's going to push them off. But we just want to get it back together and see how it's going to ride. Um, make sure we don't have any problems, make sure there's nothing wrong with the actual ball. Uh, the joint that uh, pushes the torque to the ball bearings. So we'll pull that off, put our springs on there tomorrow. Um, if you take your brakes off, you'll see the spring. It goes right there between the pads. When you're not using them, it causes the pads to separate off of the rotor. But I'm sure you can figure that out on your own. It's not that complicated. The hard parts are already done. We'll go ahead and tighten this down. When I torque, I run it until it gets tight. And then reaching on the inside, I kind of like the concept because when you reach on the inside, you're not going to be able to torque as much as you would if you were on the outside because you can put your weight into it. Which is good because 150 pounds of pressure would be tight. We didn't want to go back. Okay. So we'll go. See? That, that, that. Okay, that's just snug tight. Then so what we're going to do, come down. And what I'm, I like to do is give it one good jolt downward with a little bump. Like maybe a bump bump, but with a little force behind it. Um, it's not going to come off. Yeah, yeah. Same thing here. Uh, ratchet wrenches are amazing. Who ever thought of this thing? It's a genius. Sockets are great. Okay, see we got it snug. We didn't put any force into it. We're gonna one and done. It's like a bump bump, but it's not gonna go that far. Just you know, you'll see what I'm talking about. But use your discretion. Wow. And that's the brakes back on. Don't forget your spring, like I did the last time I did my brakes. So I have to go buy a new one tomorrow. And I'm going to go get the other side caught up. We're going to put the tire back on. And it's self-explanatory from there. So if you get the concept, ah, the two hardest parts are your star bit and your inch and a quarter here. It's going to take some <laughs> work. I recommend spraying it with some brake cleaner, getting any corrosion off, you know, if you can using some kind of PV uh, bolt blast or this chainsaw lube mixed with the uh, the brake cleaner you know after I sprayed the brake cleaner then I sprayed some brake lube let it sit for an hour and it did the same thing as PV uh, bolt blast and these were actually able to come off it took me an hour of wasting time and I had to go rent or no actually I bought the uh, pry a uh, half inch pry bar for the inch and, a, inch and a quarter socket which you have to have that pry bar if you have the socket and you have a pipe that is sturdy enough you can hook it on the end of your ratchet and use it as a pry bar but 25 bucks I'll probably use it a lot more since I do all my work on my own vehicles mission successful two front end bearings swapped out and of course we could have swapped our brakes and rotors at the same time if we wanted to but I just replaced mine last year what I do recommend is when you take this existing rotor off make sure to keep these bolts knock them out put them somewhere clean them up put them somewhere because you never know when you're tightening a lug you're gonna pop one of them and it's gonna break sometimes we don't know our own strength but I like to keep these now I got what one two three twelve of these things in case I ever break one or whatnot you know <laughs> who knows I've broke several in the past they get hot you go to take them off after you've been driving for a while because you got a flat and when they're hot and you go to untorque it it's hot and the bolt just pop, pop. so it's always good to have these um, and you have plenty of them when you take these off but I didn't go over the basics Hold on. 
I didn't go to the basics of bleeding the brakes because there's thousands of videos out there. Everybody has their own way to do it. Me, I get someone in the vehicle with it running, pump, pump, pump. I basically loosen the little bolt and kind of a little bit to where you can see just the, the fluid seeping out. And then you have a pump, 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 hold it to the floor. And then you loosen it a little and you'll see the brake fluid start coming out. And if you see bubbles, you want to keep pumping. So I probably do about six repetitions, pump, pump, pump. And as they're pump, 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 I'm loosening it a little to see the fluid come out to where it's a steady, steady stream. And you want something to catch it at the bottom. Okay. And on the third pump, when they hold it to the floor, that's when you want to tighten it down. And you do that, you know, three to six repetitions on each tire. And then your brakes should be calibrated. Your brakes should be bled. And then, of course, putting your tire back on, on both sides. Put your nuts on, tighten them in a star fashion. Start here, go here next, go here next, go here next. Tighten them as snug tight as you can get. Then you're going to drop the car to the floor, off the jacks, and then you're going to tighten them with your crowbar, pry bar, whatever you have, impact, whatever it is, you're going to tighten them. Um, once you get them, you know, finger tight, you're going to snug tight them, and then from snug tight, I like to do one half turn. But anyways, thanks for watching the video. I hope it helps and inspires a lot of you people out there to do it yourself. That, you know, could have cost me 1500 bucks to take it to the dealership. The part was 120 The tools that I had to buy and, of course, rent, I get a $50 deposit back. So, I probably spent about... 350 bucks and saved myself a good 11 1200 bucks and it took me about four hours you know we're going to minus that one hour that we lost trying to get that bolt off but if it was a consistent flow you know maybe next time the lessons that i learned next time i can once i get everything apart spray it with some kind of you know bolt release and let everything sit for about an hour before I get started and that would definitely help out <laughs> because I fought with it and um when you're taking that center one and a quarter bolt out you need a pry bar or you need a uh, pr what is it a ratchet pry wrench or whatever it is they're about this long they're 25 bucks but you gotta have it it sucks and don't forget to coat everything with high temperature uh, either lube for the brakes or when you're putting the bolts in put that um, anti-seize lubricant uh, most of this stuff that's you know they have at the counter at the AutoZone store is high temperature uh, most of the things for automobiles that are you know anti-seize lubricant or brake lubricant any of that stuff is designed for high temperature but thanks for watching and know that no matter what you do, I'm a systems engineer. I do programming. Um, <laughs> I, you know, anybody can do their own work as long as you want to do it, you know. And if you value saving money, then, you know, watch some videos. Get out there and do it. Spend a Saturday and learn something. Hey, everything you know how to do now doesn't make do nothing but make you better. So, peace out. Thanks for watching.